Hello everybody. In this problem, we are going to be taking a look at the solution to the honors electromagnetic induction practice problems one. Let's take a look at the first problem. We have a 0 0.14 meter wide and 0 0.28 meter long wire coil containing 10 loops lies on a horizontal tabletop as shown in the figure. An upward magnetic field crosses the tabletop and the, and the field magnitude increases from 0 to the maximum value of 2.6 Tesla in 0 0.30 seconds. Let's start with looking at what we are given in the problem. We are given the uh, width of the loop of wire, 0 0.14 meters, and the length of the loop of wire, 0 0.28 meters, to find the area i know i multiply my length times the width and when i do that i will find an area of the loop of 0 0.0392 square meters there are 10 loops in the wire and the magnitude of the magnetic field is 2.6 tesla there are, uh, we also know that the um the field goes from its minimum or from zero to its maximum value in 0 .0, 0 0.30 seconds. I can talk very well. The first thing they want us to find here is the maximum magnetic flux through the coil. So in order to find the magnetic flux, I know that my symbol for magnetic flux is the Greek letter phi. I know that is equal to the magnetic field times the area of the loop. So I multiply 2.6 Tesla by 0 0.0392 square meters, and I'm going to get a magnetic flux of 0 0.10 Weber. Part B asks, what is the induced EMF in the coil? To find the induced EMF, we are going to use Faraday's law. And I know that Faraday's law tells us that the induced EMF is equal to the number of turns times the magnetic flux divided by time. Notice I have omitted the negative sign that we sometimes put in front of the number of coils in Faraday's law. Uh, that negative sign, I want to use the word optional but uh, but we can leave it out that negative sign really just denotes that the induced emf has a polarity to it and then it goes in opposite directions depending on which way the coil is oriented in the magnetic field so mathematically it doesn't change anything you can leave it out and it usually doesn't uh, affect anything especially with um, as deep as we are going into um, uh, electromagnetic induction so I know that there are 10 loops in the wire. My magnetic flux is 0 0.10 Weber, and the time is 0 0.30 seconds. When I do that math out, I will have a induced EMF of 3.3 volts. Part C asks, if the net resistance of the coil is 0 0.60 ohms, what is the magnitude of the induced current in the coil? For this, we can use Ohm's law, and remember Ohm's law, which is typically V equals IR, the induced EMF, which we represent with the Greek letter epsilon, for our purposes can read the same as a voltage. So I can uh, use Ohm's law for an induced voltage as well as a voltage induced by a power source or created by a power source, I should say. To solve Ohm's law for current. I know the current is going to equal the induced EMF divided by the resistance. I plug my values into that equation and I will have a current of 5.6 amps. Part D asks, what is the rate of thermal energy produced by the coil? So we're going to look at thermal energy in terms of the power produced by the coil. And I know that according to Ohm's law, the power is equal to the current times the voltage. Remember, P equals IV. We're just replacing voltage with our uh, induced EMF. So the formula will read P equals IE. And I know that says pi. And yes, that makes me hungry too. But this is a short worksheet so that we can go finish this up and then go eat some pie. So we multiply the induced emf by the current 
and I should get a power rating of 18 watts. On to problem number two. We have a square loop of wire, 0 0.20 meters on each side, has a resistance of 0 0.35 ohms. The loop is moved at a constant speed in 0 0.40 seconds from position 1, where a magnetic field is 0, to position 2, where a magnetic field is 0 0.90 Tesla. So in this case, we are given uh, the area of the loop because it is a square. I just have to square the side. So that's going to give me an area of 0 0.04 square meters. The resistance is 0 0.35 ohms. The time it takes to go from a magnetic field of 0 to the magnetic field uh, at its maximum value is 0 0.40 seconds. And that maximum value for the magnetic field is 0 0.90 Tesla. The first thing that they're going to ask us in this problem is what is the induced EMF in the, the loop during this period of time? Once again, we're going to use Faraday's law. So I know that the induced EMF is equal to the number of turns times the magnetic field times the area divided by the time. Once again, we have the singular, a square loop of wire. So I know that the number of turns is going to be one and is going to equal one. I know that my magnetic field is 0 0.90 Tesla. The area is 0 0.04 square meters, and the time is 0 0.40 seconds. When I do that math out, I should get a, an induced EMF of 0 0.09 volts. The second thing that they are asking us to find in this problem is what is the magnitude of the induced current in the loop? So just as with the previous problem to find the induced current, we are going to use Ohm's law. We are just going to use the induced EMF in place of the regular voltage. So the current is going to equal the induced EMF divided by the resistance. And that's going to give me 0 0.09 volts divided by 0 0.35 ohms will give me an induced current of 0 0.26 amps. Part C asks, what is the power dissipated in the loop? Once again, I know that the power is equal to the current times the induced EMF. So I know that P equals IE. We have a second helping of pi. And I know that my current is 0 0.26 amps. My induced EMF is 0 0.09 volts. And that's going to give me a power uh, dissipated of 0 0.023 watts. Part D asks, how much force is required to move the coil from position 1 to position 2? I know that the force is equal to the current times the length of the wire times the strength of the magnetic field. So F equals ILB. I know my current is 0 0.26 amps for the length of the wire because the force is only applied to the uh, length or the side of the wire that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So that is going to be only one side of my square loop. So the length is only 0 0.20 meters or the length of one of the sides of the square. And the magnitude of the magnetic field is 0 0.90 Tesla. Multiply those together and I am going to have a force of 0 0.047 Newtons.